It's vlog day 989. Good morning, and welcome to Airbnb's Cribs Carcassonne style. This is just a really quick uh, Airbnb tour of my Carcassonne Airbnb before Carcassonne. Never know if I'm saying it right, I'm probably not. This is, of course, an hour before my train. Less now, so I should probably hurry it up. However, it's a really nice little Airbnb. I'm gonna give you the walkthrough. Kitchen, ooh, let's turn on the lights. Kitchen, pretty fantastic. Everything you need, coffee, fridge, oven, stove, blender even, pretty much fully stocked. And they even left a bottle of rosé in the fridge for me, which I did not touch. I just, I just didn't want it. On this side, we've got the living room, tiny little desk with the internet on it. Of course, I used the table to work, couch, fuzzy chair, TV with Netflix that didn't work, but I tried it anyways just to see. Big picture of the fortress here. We have two bedrooms, one with a crib in it and a bathroom, just so you know what the layout's like. This is the bedroom that I stayed in. Oh yeah, and don't forget the security light that turns on whenever you walk by it over the treacherously steep stairs. This is the room I stayed in. Bed, fan, no longer functioning fireplace, and a crib, and a place to hang your clothes and a, door, a window that opens up. On this side, pretty much the same thing. Oh, bed, fuzzy pillows, place to hang clothes, no crib, and construction outside. But they do have a really tall mirror in here, which is nice if you want to see how you look. Over here, in the bathroom, sink, shower, toilet around the corner. Hello. And a little bit of art on the wall. Oh, and a skylight. And last but not least, utility closet that smells kind of funny but has a washing machine in it and that why well, I used that washing machine to just that figured might as well do my laundry while I was here that way I'm transporting less dirty laundry home and more clean laundry and there you have it an Airbnb in a nutshell and the other thing if you haven't been watching you should obviously watch my other videos about Caracasone because I've been here for a bit but we have a very foggy day outside <laughs> Sorry, my camera's doing that thing where it dies randomly again, but kind of like less frequently, so I'm getting a lot done. Anywho, we have a very foggy day outside, but a nice view of the castle up here. You can see it off in the distance. It's not distant at all, you're right at the foot of the fortress. Apparently there are Airbnbs up in the fortress, and of course, there are hotels up there. There's also a five-star hotel across the river. Totally out of my budget, but who cares, because I prefer an Airbnb any day, anyway. And that has been our, uh, our, our random tour of my Airbnb. I will link to this listing below, uh, but I get the feeling that it's always booked up. I just got lucky. These were like the two days this month that it was open. And there you have it. Now, I gotta get out of here, enter the fog, and get on a train. <laughs> Well, Paul, you know how you told me to take risks with the drone? And, uh, you know, small drone, basically a toy. Eventually I'd probably lose it. I think I just lost it. It's down on the base of a, I, uh, we're gonna, t we'll talk about this. I have a train to catch in about 30 minutes and my drone is currently freaking out down. Well, I mean, miraculously, somehow, I was flying it under the bridge. I thought, you know, that'd be a nice shot along the water. It lost signal, freaked out, and apparently decided to bounce off the ceiling and who knows what, but, and managed to save itself and land right there, of all places, where it's nice and dry, but it, it, it's refusing to take off. And I don't know how dry it actually is. I wonder, can I get it to take off? Yes, I wanna try and take off, hold on. I'm gonna see if I can save this. No, one of the one of the props looks like it's broken. Like I think it's actually completely broken. Which means that the drone is lost at this point. Which also means that the footage that I was just getting, I only have on my phone as like a preview footage 
<sighs> there is that much, that much wall to drop, that much water to cross to get to here. And there it is down there. If only I had a boat. I guess the easier way would be climb into the water all the way down there and then swim. You can see how this might be a little bit prohibitive to the retrieval of the drone. Oh, I, I feel a mixture of emotions right now. One, disappointment. I figured that it was worth taking the risk over the water because it was a safe place to fly, no people, you know. It seemed like it, not such a bad spot. On the other side, it's, it's a surprise because I've never had it lose connectivity that dramatically before, especially in like open air. So I'm not really sure what happened. I made sure to go low enough. I don't know if the preview footage got saved on my phone or on my phone or not. Uh, and I just feel bad. I don't want to lose my drone. I love my drone. I never get to fly it. And then I, the, I brought it, the whole reason I brought it on this trip was because I was looking for at least one opportunity to fly it, which is why I flew it this morning. Cause I was like, you know what? Risk be damned. I'm gonna fly it this morning. And this is what I get. Dang it. I'm just gonna take it for one quick slow, one quick low flight. Anyways, that's what's gonna happen. The other, the other side of it is, even though I feel kind of crappy for losing it, because I don't want to lose my drone. On the other hand, you know, that's what it's there for. That's why Paul gave it to me. When he first gave it to me, he was like, this thing's basically a toy. It's not even really a drone. Take risks. If you lose it, you lose it. it to quote Paul, for those of you who have actually met Paul, it is what it is. Uh, I already had, okay. Anyways, the, there are a couple of rough points with the travel this weekend, but that, that, uh, that definitely tops it off. So, assuming I'm not late for my train, because that would be, basically the cost of missing my train right now is the same cost of replacing that drone. Main problems are obviously that I just left a tiny little drone in full operation. Well, in partial operation. I've never actually lost a drone before. I feel like I just joined some sort of exclusive YouTuber club. Not a YouTuber club I wanted to join, but you know, <laughs> if it's a badge of, of pseudo honor, I'll, I guess I'll take it. <sighs> Let's get to the train. It's killing me because if I had more time and also like someone to watch my stuff, probably could have just waded into the water and gone and gotten it myself. I mean, I don't know how strong that river is, but I don't think it's that strong. <sighs> I'll, I'll be dwelling on this for a while. First, I, I, I'll get coffee and something to eat and then we'll get on the train and then we can, we have all the way back to Paris to dwell on it. So it turns out that I have a fan here in Carcassonne. I just found in my Instagram stories or in my Instagram message requests. And I just dropped her a thing saying, oh, sorry, I'm leaving town. And also my drone just died on the bridge and she was like, oh, my husband can go get that. Which is so nice, which, which is, Matty, you're my last hope. And please do thank your husband for me if he actually does get in the river for me. I should have done it myself. I'm feeling like, I'm actually feeling a little guilty about it right now. I abandoned my little drone. now. Alright, first train done. Excuse me, I'm a little messy. First train done. Maddie, if um, your husband gets there after some industrious and observant swimmer happens to already snag my drone, I long ago came to terms with the fact that I would eventually, one day, lose this drone because I was willing to take great risks with it. The reason, <laughs> and I'm walking by like a giant construction vacuum cleaner right now, so that's not helpful. The reason it comes as a shock is because I didn't feel like that was all that risky. I mean, come on. Uh, it's just stuff in the end, but come on, at least I could have lost it like doing something incredibly dangerous or risky instead of just like flying under a bridge. Oof, big stone bridges. Lesson learned. All right, well, I've got one more train. I gotta figure out where my next train is. And then I gotta jump on that next. We got in kind of early. I've got like over an hour. I guess I should find lunch. I feel like I'm, I mean, I know I just lost something, but I feel like I'm missing something. Like I just left something on the train, which I did not do, because I picked everything up 
but it's that sense of loss that's gonna stick with me. Let's go look at this park for a second and maybe we can find some food or something. Well, I suppose now I can say I've been to Bézier. <sighs> Just need to go straight to bed when I get home. Unfortunately, including food time, it is not food time, it is everything is closed time. But there's stuff back in the train station, so I might just go into the train station and, uh, you know, get something there. I'm, I'm I got the, the sail, the wind's out of my sails. The wind's out of my sails. We'll, yeah, we'll just get back on the train and go to Paris. It's like a four hour trip ahead of us. It'll, it'll all be good. All right, one last brain dump before we go back to Paris. The reason that it, this is haunting me more than anything, I mean, on the one side, it sucks to lose the drone. Uh, but for me, like, it's like I could I, I just keep thinking about how I like, I could have gone and gotten. I don't really have the time, but if I would have rushed, I could have like gone to the hotel that was right there and been like, hey, can you hold my stuff? And can you give me a towel, please? I need to run and jump in the river. I could run, jump in. I probably could have been fine in the water. It didn't look that deep. It would have been really cold, but you know, I could have jumped in my underwear, swapped out for something dry, put it in a plastic bag, and then, you know, made it back with uh, my, my being banged up, but you know, still in my possession drone. I don't know. There are just a couple of turns this weekend that kind of already had me on a little bit of a downbeat, and this just kind of put me in the rest of the way. So it's not even really the drone, I don't think, at the end of the day. It's, yeah, we'll be fine. Maddie, again, thank you. If you do manage to get the drone, I really appreciate it. And I will send you guys something warm for your husband. Like I said, I have no idea what that'll be, but you know, something warm to heat warming back up after jumping in that cold, cold river for me. And uh, yeah, that's nice. I mean, on the upside, there's a, there's that nice tinge of humanity, even if they don't manage to get the drone, that somebody would offer to jump in the river for you uh, after you should have done it yourself. It's really kind. And I really, really appreciate that. So thank you guys. Muchas gracias. And whether or not I get the drone back, just need to get back to Paris and, uh, you know, sleep a little bit. When I do get back to Paris, I need to refill the Peloton stickers. Apparently they ran out of stickers and didn't tell me until, you know, they were already out. Got to work on that. Uh, but I'll, you know, drop those off. Hopefully see Laura and Bethany for a drink because Bethany's back in town, if you remember Bethany. And uh, yeah, then, uh, then, then, then bedtime. Then sleeps. That was something new, scrubbing the ground with an automatic mop. <laughs> After chatting with some friends about the whole situation, I'm feeling a little bit better, but uh, yeah, I'll be fine. Hit the toilet and then the train should be here in the next few minutes and uh, you know, four, four hours to bear it. that I opted for first class to treat myself, get a little work done. So at least I've got that going for me. And top deck so I can see what's going on outside. He says as he enters a ditch. <sighs> Anywho, on the Paris. gonna leave you here because I gotta rush back to my place grab some stickers rush to the peloton before they close you know and then I'm just gonna try and decompress with friendship that's what friends are for 
And because I can't let this sit, I've gotta, I've gotta throw this in at the very end. They got it, I'll post the proof right here. Thank you guys so much for going, it just made me feel so much better about the world. Just one fell swoop. <sighs> Didn't totally lose my drone forever, which is both a surprise and a pleasant one at that. Thank you so much, guys. Also, speaking of surprises, look at the construction is pretty much finished on this section of the bike path. That's great, okay. I guess I don't have to put in my RIP. I'm still gonna leave the RIP footage that I had planned for this, and then I'll see you guys tomorrow morning. <laughs>